Hey everyone, got a video for you here showing the new features in the 1.3 update. Lots of cool stuff in this one for you guys. Hope you like it and let's get started. All right, I think you guys know the drill. We're gonna go ahead and install this. Before you install, just make sure you don't have any of the RBC add-ons enabled. Let install our new 1.3 update. Once we have that installed, we have it enabled. So we have our new panel, our RBC assets. I'm really excited about this collaboration with uh, Production Crate. They reached out to me and wanted to talk about offering some of their 3D models along with the RBC add-on. I thought that was really cool. So they provided uh, nine low-poly vehicle models. And so these will all come pre-rigged and everything. So we can go ahead and import a vehicle. You can either import it to the center or the cursor, wherever you want. So we can import this and it'll automatically create a scene for you and it will come pre-rigged, everything ready to go. These models are under the editorial license, so they aren't available for commercial use, but for personal projects, they're free to use. We are planning on providing more high poly uh, vehicles and other packs available. So that'll be really cool to flesh this out. I see a lot of opportunity with this collaboration and this asset panel. And also to note, uh, any versions below 3.4 will have a loss of data uh, due to Blender changing their MixRGB node. So just be aware of that. Another new thing we have is we can now transfer our rig properties to our collection folders. So, so if you're using 1.2, you can just go ahead and update to 1.3. Make sure it's installed. Refresh the add-on. And you'll see this button to update your rigs. So this will update it to 1.3. And this will basically just transfer your rig properties to your collection folder. That way you can append it. So since we're doing that, let's go ahead and include our, our model parts in our collection. That way everything is in the collection when we append it. So what we can do is go ahead and save that. And then we can open up a new blend file. So now we can append our collection folder that we just saved. Go ahead and append our RBC rig collection folder. And you can then see we have this refresh button in our collection panel. And it will apply the properties from the collection to our new scene. And we can go ahead and hide and unhide this to hide all of our constraints. Something to note is if you want to append the same rig, um, you'll notice that it, uh, nothing will pop up. Since they have the same name, it won't uh, register. So you'll have to rename the first rig you imported. And then you'll see the refresh button pop up. And so that's how you have to import multiple rigs that have the same name. So before, if you entered uh, cycles mode, you'd have this mesh, which is basically a rigid body mesh would be covering our vehicle. And so before it was just the folder icon that you would hide and disable, but that doesn't work if your uh, model pieces are in the collection. So basically now what this does is just hides and disables the ray visibility with the cycles. And this was actually a recommendation by Polyford, which is pretty crazy to get something from him, but he gave me step-by-step -step on how to actually do it. And uh, that's just something I really appreciate is if you have suggestions and you know how to do it and you can explain it to me, that helps just the process of developing this. So thanks to him, now we don't have our ugly rigid body mesh covering our vehicles. So that's pretty cool. So another new feature is our speedometer here. So we'll go ahead and run our speedometer and this will get our velocity of our vehicle moving here. So let's go ahead and restart. You can go ahead and move this around. And then down here we have our speed. So you can copy this as a driver and apply it to your speedometer or whatever you want. It's now accurately calculating the miles per hour. And we can also do kilometers per hour. So it'll actually calculate whichever one is selected. So you can have your vehicle driving in miles per hour, but also down here you can switch the font, basically the calculation, but we'll just deal with uh, miles per hour for now. All right, next up, we have our advanced driver system here. Now, whatever our input value is now gonna be our miles per hour, or you can change it to kilometers per hour, and then selecting whichever one is enabled will convert these values. So this is your target speed that your wheels will rotate at. So right off the bat, these wheels will spin at 25 miles per hour. Noting that if you want your vehicle to top out at a, a higher speed, from the beginning, you'll notice that your wheels will spin out and uh, it's just too much power which I added a time value, which is basically a buffer from zero to your target speed. So this is uh, calculated in seconds. So if we want it to go zero to 69 in say five seconds and our vehicle will now take close to five seconds to reach our top speed. 
This isn't exactly a realistic car vehicle when uh, pop a wheelie up front. So you can either add a roll constraint or uh, set the position. If we set it down here, our vehicle will have a much lower center of gravity. So this is helpful for at high speeds. And so let's go ahead and see. It's not an exact calculation. I tried my best, but there's lots of variables and the reasons why it doesn't reach that top speed. We have torque, so now we have we could do a lower torque now. And so this will also influence the your time to reach your target velocity. Let's go ahead and move on to steering. Our steering is pretty much completely redone. We now have a more accurate steering system, and we can influence the power of the steering. It's basically one, your positive value will turn right, negative value will turn left still. One will be your full 35 degree angle, so your will be zero. If you do 0.5, that'll actually be half of 35. So that's like 17.5. You can now decrease or increase the power of your steering. So you can match, have much quicker steering. And so this comes in handy for keyboards. So you can now get more accurate controls. And then brake strength is still the same as it was in 1.2. That pretty much covers it for advanced drivers. I'll go ahead and show you how guides work. We can add in an empty sphere here. So we can have our sphere be our guide object here, and we have our driving settings down here, and we have some cool features here, auto drive, reverse, and auto brake. So I'll go ahead and go through all these auto drive. So what this will do, will get the distance between your rig and your object. So it's kind of like a slingshot system. The farther away you have this, the faster your start will be. And so this is where time comes in handy. If you wanted to go long distance, you can influence it through the time. We also have these clamps. So this will be your minimum speed and your maximum speed. So here's an example to show you, see if our, our guide object is far away. We'll go ahead and press play. Our vehicle will basically just immediately start off at 50 miles an hour. And so this will be good where you, you can either clamp to a lower number or you can extend your timeout. So let's extend that to five and we'll have a much slower time to reach our target speed. So you can go ahead and play around with that to help avoid your vehicle instantly flipping over, something like that. We can enable auto reverse and we can get that angle until a certain point till the wheels reverse. And so what's cool about this is our vehicle will now turn and correct itself to follow its target. It's pretty cool. What it does is it gets your polar angle between your object and your guide object here. So right around 40 degrees, at a 40 degree angle, the wheels will reverse. If you want to increase the value so it doesn't turn beyond 90 degrees, it'll go up until it's a 90 degree angle right here. And it'll always uh, stay with the length of your vehicle. So that's how that works. So this will just continue to drive until you either manually brake it or you enable auto brake. So the way auto brake works is the same as auto drive. It gets the distance between your guide object and your car. So right now it's set to a distance of one. So you can actually take this value, copy it as a driver and apply it to whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and apply it to our circle here. So now we can uh, actually see what, at what point our brake's going to be influenced. But it's uh, pretty cool, I think. All right, let's talk about guide paths. This is how you'll make your vehicle follow a curve. So this only works with Bezier curves. I don't know if this will be an issue with people. I tried it with Nerves Path, but it didn't really work that well. It works best with Bezier curves. Some things to note up here, you can enable handles. And so this will actually give you the direction of your curve. So basically how it works is it gets the distance between your vehicle and one of these points on your curve. Blender actually doesn't provide these points. You have to do a, an algorithm to find the points between your control points here. So it's a bit more complicated to figure out. So what the guide path does is snap your guide object to a point along the curve. So we can go ahead and select our Bezier curve and then on play, it'll snap the guide object to the point on the curve. You have two values here. You have distance, which would be the distance between your guide object and your vehicle. And you have the resolution. So this is the resolution of your curve here. So you see, once we press play, it'll have a snapping motion. And we can go ahead and increase the resolution to get a smoother snapping motion. So your distance is going to be the distance between your guide object and your vehicle. But it's also the distance between your vehicle and a point on the curve. So basically what it does is it finds the radius of your vehicle and it tries to find the nearest point along the curve. 
So if you have a lower distance, you have a lower radius. So you might run into issues if you're not close enough to the curve, it won't snap to it. And it's always going to follow this guide object. So you're going to want to make sure that you're at the beginning of your curve and you're close enough to the point on the curve for your object to snap to. So generally, keep it around two or five, and you shouldn't have too many issues with that. So there are limitations with this method, unfortunately. One being, since it's more of a realistic approach, you're not going to be able to hit as sharp of turns. As you can see, it's not always going to follow the path directly. And unfortunately, also with loops, it'll get confused and it won't be able to find the next point along the curve. That is a limitation to be aware of so that if you want it to be doing loops at this point, unfortunately we cannot. Another issue we have is speed. If you're driving fast enough, your wheels will slip out and, and you might get knocked off the course. But what you can do is increase the tire friction, back tires here, so they're not slipping out as much. Um, also, um, so to avoid toppling over, you can either enable the roll constraint or set the weight position a little lower. That way it's just not uh, toppling over. So there are limitations to it, but I'm sure there'll be improvements in the future. It's just taken so long to even get it to this point that um, it's just a lot more complicated than I could ever imagine. So if anyone actually knows a bit more about curves or the algorithms that Blender uses, to determine the points, um, maybe they can help me figure out a better solution, but it's workable. So it's very much a last minute addition, but it's turning out pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and include it in the final release. And that is a leaning constraint for motorcycles. It will now lean your vehicle when turning. With two wheeled vehicles, of course, it's just going to topple over. So you need this uh, roll constraint enabled. So with that enabled, we have a few variables. So your y-axis is going to be like the length of your vehicles. So you can change this to 15 degrees. So this is going to be your hard limit of uh, how far your vehicle will tip over. Underneath the hard limit, we have our stiffness. So this is actually a rotational spring. So you can actually increase the stiffness of the spring here. And also the dampening. I like a little higher dampening just so you're not... When you reset to the beginning, you're not like rocking. Oh, we can go ahead and enable our lane constraint. And so you can see once we enable that, since we're already turning, we now have our lane constraint. So this is just a rotational motor. So every time your steering turns right or left, we have another motor, which will be fighting against the stiffness of your roll constraint. So this could be an issue with the strength of your rotational constraint. It's actually fighting the force of turning. So it should be leaning in right here, but our spring's too weak. It's just falling over. So we can go ahead and increase this and see how this looks. And then of course, if you're increasing this, you will need to increase your leaning constraint. That's looking a little better. Yeah. You can see if, if you continue to hold the steering, when you're doing a wheelie or something like that, you'll spin around and that's because of the motor. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I didn't get to everything I wanted to achieve for 1.3. I wanted to do more work on the animation panel, which I didn't get around to just because curves and the new driving system just became much more work than I had intended. The animation panel is going to be extended to 1.4. And for 1.4, I really want to kind of polish off the add-on and talk to you guys and figure out what do we need. I know a lot of people want the, the cool stuff like smoke simulations and tire burnouts and demolition stuff. If you are interested in destruction demolishing, go ahead and check out Rafa VFX. He's doing like some incredible destruction work with this add-on. Stuff that's just blowing my mind. I don't even know how he does it. So you can check him out. I'll link him down below. But I'm really looking for your guys' suggestions on what this add-on needs to basically be complete. As always, thank you so much for your support and your feedback, too. It's been really cool to see what people are making with it also. So you can go ahead and tag me and stuff that you're making with it or uh, share it on our Discord. If you have any questions or run into issues, of course, reach out. If you're having issues, it helps to see what the issue is. So uploading it to Discord, I can see the issue or you can send me the blend file and I can get to it a bit quicker than in the YouTube comments. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the update. I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys continue to have fun with it and go take a nap.